This is the Italian Citizenship Podcast, hosted by Marco Permonian and Rafael Di Furia. Hello there and welcome back to another edition of the Italian Citizenship Podcast. Last week we brought to you a special update on the current situation for those who will be applying for Italian citizenship through an ancestor who was a minor at the time of their parents' naturalization. And so this week we are doing a follow-up for two episodes in a row of the Italian Citizenship Podcast. But this week we wanted to talk a little bit more about what things might be looking like for those who will make a petition through the court for Italian citizenship by descent through an ancestor who was a minor at the time of their parents' naturalization, as well as alternative routes that might be worthwhile considering. So Marco, based on what you were saying last week, it sounds as though there are a number of different possibilities for a person to be able to consider now with this Uh, new minor update. And as you had mentioned as well, that even though this could affect a large number of people, that there will still be a large number of people who can get their citizenship by descent, but they might actually have just a different pathway to that citizenship that might actually be a little bit easier for them to go through. Exactly. So in last week's episode, we have talked about the memo that was issued by the Italian Ministry of Interior in Italian Circolare according to which people who have an ancestor who was naturalized when their child was a minor are no longer able to apply for citizenship through an Italian consulate or an Italian municipality. However, we also mentioned how the circolare does not apply to the Italian judicial system. So people who before were thinking to file their case in court or even more now are thinking of filing their citizenship case in an Italian court should not worry about this circolare. Let me also add that a very large number of people that were uh, in theory able to apply for citizenship through a consulate before the circolare came into effect were not doing that, were not in a position to do so because consulates were not releasing enough appointments for everybody. And therefore, even before, a lot of people were thinking of presenting their case through the judicial system, so through via an Italian court. And like I just mentioned, the official communication that was released by the Ministry of Interior does not affect the Italian judges. And actually, these judges, they are regularly approving cases involving an ancestor who was naturalized when their child was minor. So with a few exceptions, I can say that the majority of the judges of the Italian courts are approving cases right now at this moment in time involving an ancestor who became naturalized when their child was a minor. Now, you have mentioned before that people might also have, regardless, alternatives that they can look into when uh, considering to file an application for citizenship via uh, an ancestor who was naturalized when their child was a minor. In fact, in the vast majority of cases, it is the male ancestor who became naturalized when their child was a minor, whereas the female ancestor either never became naturalized or became naturalized completely involuntarily and automatically due to their husband's naturalization prior to 1922. Uh, In fact, Prior to 1922, prior to the Cable Act, women were considered as dependent on their husbands. So the husband's naturalization was causing the automatic and involuntary naturalization of the woman as well. And as we have said in many other videos, that situation was considered as discriminatory and basically against the Italian constitution by um, several Italian courts. So if your case has been affected by this specific issue, meaning the a uh, male ancestor who was naturalized when their child was a minor, not only you have good chances of getting citizenship through that very male ancestor, but you could have even better chances if you use your female ancestor, assuming that she never naturalized or that she naturalized when their child was already over uh, 21 or 18, depending on whether uh, we're talking about prior to 1975 or after 1975. But also there could be even more alternatives for people who have different family lines uh, with Italian ancestry, meaning that if you have a set of great-grandparents that is affected by this issue, maybe because the male ancestor was naturalized when their child was a minor, or both the male and the female, which is generally not likely, you can look into whether you have another set of great-grandparents who came from Italy that maybe are not affected by this specific issue. 
Thank you so much, Marco. And I'm sure something that will be on a lot of people's minds when going through this new path to get their citizenship, they might be wondering, what is the likelihood? Is this going to be more of a challenge? Is it going to be less of a challenge? Is there any real major difference at the end of the day between getting citizenship this way and how it would have been before? Uh, do they face the same chances as they did? Or are their chances better or different in any way? When applying for citizenship through the court system, uh, like I just mentioned, there are several categories and several ways that somebody could qualify for uh, Italian citizenship by descent. So if somebody is filing their application through the courts based on the male ancestor who was naturalized when their child was a minor, so uh, the same application that they would have filed at the consulate maybe, but now they have to file through the court system uh, because of the recently issued circolare and also because consulates don't have uh, appointments available, then the chances of success at this moment in time are still on average, very high. So across the countries, judges uh, tend to approve these kind of cases and we have way more successes than denials. That We've had a couple of situations where some judges in some specific areas of Italy have denied these kind of cases, meaning the ancestor who was naturalized when their child was a minor was considered to be a problem in the transfer of citizenship. But these are isolated cases. And like I said, for uh, in the vast majority of cases, judges and courts across the country are approving these kind of cases. Now, regarding using a female ancestor, if the female ancestor either never naturalized or naturalized completely involuntarily and automatically as a consequence of uh, their husband's naturalization prior to 1922, in that scenario, the chances of success are even higher, meaning that Basically, all of the courts are approving uh, these kind of situations as of this moment in time. And like I said before, it is very likely that if you have an ancestor, a male ancestor, who naturalized when their child was a minor, it is also likely, with, of course, exceptions, that you also have a female ancestor who either never naturalized or that naturalized uh, when their child was already an adult or that naturalized completely involuntarily and automatically uh, as a consequence of their husband's naturalization. Well, thank you, Marco. And I have to admit, I'm curious about something. With this Supreme Court's decision that's been made, this ruling, why is it that so many lower courts are making their own separate decisions from this particular ruling from the Supreme Court? Well, there is a very specific reason that has to do with how the Italian legal system works. And in the Italian legal system, the legal precedent is not binding not even a precedent that was issued by a superior court, not even a precedent from the Supreme Court. So the Supreme Court can say whatever they want. They are free to make their own determinations. However, lower courts can disregard those determinations if they want to. And the situation is that so far, the vast majority of the local regional courts have disregarded or decided that they don't want to apply uh, those uh, determinations that were made by the Supreme Court. Uh, the way it works is that if the counterpart, meaning the Ministry of Interior, doesn't agree with the local court's decision to approve a citizenship case, then they should appeal it, which they normally don't do it. And then if the Court of Appeal, uh, again, rules in favor of the petitioner, then the Ministry should appeal the decision of the Court of Appeal before the Supreme Court. And at that point, you can accept the Supreme Court, of course, to decide according to their own set of principles. So to decide exactly how they have already decided. But if the ministry does, doesn't appeal the decision issued by a local regional court, we'll never get there. So we'll never get again to the Supreme Court. And normally, generally speaking, the ministry doesn't even appear in court. So that's why the local courts are free to make their own decisions, their own determinations. And if the ministry doesn't even appear or doesn't appeal the decision after that has been taken, which is normally the case, then you will never get to the Supreme Court again. And the Supreme Court will never have the chance to issue the decision that they want to issue. And Marco, just one more question for you. Uh, this new process that we're talking about going through the court, I mean, as we've been talking about, that this is something that's become a little bit more common with the uh, situation with the consulates in the US. There are some people who are deciding to apply directly in Italy, and then there are some people who are able to go through the courts themselves. But a question this leaves me with is that how long does this 
take to go through this process? And how does that compare with going through the consulate or uh, an Italian municipality, comune? Well, going through the courts, it's a very efficient process, especially uh, if compared to the process at the consulate. Uh, first of all, because the consulate is uh, wasn't and isn't releasing enough appointments for uh, people that were and are looking for citizenship by the sense. So a lot of people were forced to go through the courts anyway, like I said before. But um, so given that the consulate was not releasing appointments, per se, going through the courts was a more efficient process because at least you can get your case on the docket instead of waiting uh, and waiting for an appointment being released by the consulate. But even, you know, let's say that uh, you are able to get an appointment at the consulate, the processing time, as we all know, is up to two years. And it generally tends to take two years for a consulate process a citizenship application and in the majority of the cases it doesn't take two years for a court to approve a citizenship case i'd say the average is between 12 and 18 months so from when you submit your case you can expect on average of course it depends on the area of italy depends on the court but on on average you can expect a case to be decided in uh, a year a year and a half i've seen cases being approved even in uh, seven or eight months. And I think in one case, uh, it took maybe five or six months. So it was a very quick process. Thank you so much, Marco, for answering that. And another question that I, I know has come up, and I think it's based on maybe a misunderstanding of how the system works, that if a person gets their citizenship recognized through the court, does this mean that they will then have to apply again in the US or at a consulate or at a comune or that they'll have another step to do or that they'll have another application to go through after they've received this approval? This is a quite common misconception, but the court is the entity that will grant citizenship to the petitioners. So there is no uh, subsequent process that needs to be initiated. So once you have been granted citizenship by the court, you don't have to go through another process to be approved uh, in terms of you know being approved of your Italian citizenship that needs to be done before another entity. It is the court that grants citizenship to the petitioner. Now there is a registration process and it needs to happen after the court grants citizenship, meaning the judgment needs to be registered uh, at the municipality where the uh, Italian ancestor was born, but that is a formality. It's an automatic process and it's just a matter of registering a positive decision that was already issued by an Italian court. Thank you again, Marco. And another question on this topic is where these courts are located. I know in the past we've talked about how all of these courts cases were going through the court of Rome, but now that we're talking about going through a different sort of thing, do people have options about which court that they can choose or are they going to be uh, having to go to a very specific court because of uh, something within their ancestry? You need to file your case in the court in the region where the ancestor was born, and it needs to be filed in the capital of the region, with the exception of a few regions where there are two courts. So not only one in the capital of the region, but there is also another court in a major city in that uh, region. Uh, that is to do with the fact that uh, you don't really file in the municipality or in the court that is located in the municipality of birth of the ancestor, but in a specific court that has the ability to deal with immigration cases and those type of courts that are only located in either the capital of the region or a major city in the region itself. Well, Marco, again, thank you so much for making yourself available for this episode of the Italian Citizenship Podcast. And of course, if anybody is needing help with this process, how can they get in contact with you and your team for further clarification? People can contact us through our website, italiancitizenshipassistance.com. Absolutely fantastic. And also just to make it clear, you are able to represent people in court for these cases, correct? Of course. Absolutely fantastic. Just I think that's an important detail to make sure that people understand. And of course, if you're interested in more information like this about Italian citizenship, be sure that you're subscribed to this YouTube channel as well as the audio only version that is available on your favorite podcasting platforms through the podcast called the Italian Citizenship Podcast. But of course, if you're subscribed to the YouTube channel, that means you're also automatically subscribed to the Italian Real Estate Podcast. And of course, we will be continuing on with our normal schedule of alternating between weeks of the Citizenship Podcast 
podcast and the real estate podcast next week with an upload of the Italian real estate podcast. And of course, if you're interested about life abroad and living abroad as a dual citizen expat, be sure to come over to my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Rafael Di Furia, or you can search for Not Your Average Globetrotter on YouTube, Google, or your favorite podcasting platform of choice. But of course, we again have been here with Italian attorney Marco Permunian from ItalianCitizenshipAssistance.com. I'm Rafael Di Furia. Stay safe and healthy out there. We'll see you all next time. Later. Thank you.